I'd like to welcome each one of you back today to our study. What a blessing this has been to me as I have gone over and studied once again uh, in Genesis in preparation for uh, these devo this devotional series. And uh, we are at the end of Genesis chapter 3 today. Uh, keep in mind that three chapters into the Word of God, sin enters this world. And uh, three chapters from the end of the Word of God, sin is dealt with. And the only place really that you don't see the effects of sin on this world are in the first two chapters of the Word of God and in the last two chapters of the Word of God. Every other chapter in God's Word shows us the results and the effects of sin in this world upon mankind and upon this earth. As we've come into Genesis chapter 3, we've seen the fall of man. We've seen uh, and been reminded of how God very clearly gave direction on the tree that they were not to eat of. And uh, Adam and Eve have fallen into sin. God has sought them. He comes asking them questions, not because he doesn't know, but he wants Adam and Eve to admit their guilt, to admit what they have done before him. And that's the exact same way in our lives, friends. God doesn't want us covering up our sin. He knows about our sin. And uh, he wants us to come to him, to acknowledge what we've done, and to ask for his forgiveness, to come to him in repentance. And uh, yesterday we concluded by looking at the curse that is upon this world because of sin. And today I want us to notice the cure because of grace. And I want to read Genesis chapter 3, verses 20 through 24. And then we're going to look at one of the verses that we didn't look at all that much yesterday. And uh, then look at verses 20 through 24. So Genesis chapter 3 verse 20 says, And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east end of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So as we come into this, we have seen the curse that is upon this earth because of sin. But today I want you to notice the cure because of grace. Keep in mind as we think about this that God would have been just and God would have been righteous to simply allow man to live in sin and to die for in sin and to experience separation from God forever. If God had allowed that to happen... Man would have gotten exactly what man deserved. But God does something in grace to see man reconciled to himself. And I want you to understand, God does not force himself upon everyone. God does not force himself on anyone. He does not require that you make a choice. He simply gives you a choice, and you can choose whether you will accept or whether you will reject what Jesus Christ has done for you. We see that cure first mentioned for us in verse 15 of Genesis 3, where it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Now that her seed there is talking about the virgin birth, the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world. And it says, And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. You see, as you look at this, you will see that Christ is the seed of the woman. That the way that he bruised the head of the serpent was through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the seed that is talked about here. Let me remind you of how he was prophesied about in Isaiah in chapter 53. And in verse 1 it says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him... There's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Now, notice this. 
Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet did we esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. That smitten of God talks about the bruising of the heel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, that is, on the Lord Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Friends, this reminds us of the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life for us. We see here that the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3, in verse 21, it says, And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. Friends, God stripped them of their self-righteous aprons. Remember how they tried to take fig leaves and sew them together to cover themselves? That reminds us of the works of men. It reminds us of religion and the things that man tries to do to make himself look right, to make himself look good, to make himself acceptable before God. But friends, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. There's nothing that we can do to cover ourselves. There's nothing that we can do to clothe ourselves before him. But friends, we ought to be thankful that Christ shed his blood so that the, the clothing could be made for Adam and Eve. And friends, in the same way, the Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood upon the cross of Calvary so that as we come to that place, that we repent of our sin and that we trust him and him alone to save us, he clothes us in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the father uh, in the story of the prodigal son as the prodigal comes home, he says, put a ring on his hand, put shoes on his feet, put the best robe on him. And friends, that's exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. It says this in Revelation chapter 19. And verse 8, it says there these words, as we think about us being clothed in the righteousness of Christ. It says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Some of the modern versions wrongly uh, interpret this passage and say that this passage is talking about the righteous acts of saints. Friends, we don't have any righteous acts in and of ourselves. The only righteousness that we have is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see here how God deals with us in grace when we deserve his wrath. He deals in mercy. And oh, friends, we ought to be thankful for that today. And then in verses 22 through 24, we find that God ex expels them from the garden in his grace as well. You say, how in the world would you look at that, him expelling him from the garden and say that God did it in grace? Friends, the reason why God did it in grace, and you can see this in verses 22 through 24, if God had left Adam in the garden of Eden, where he was. And Adam had eaten of that tree of life. He would have lived forever in his sin, lived forever separated from God. So God in his grace and in his mercy drives Adam and Eve from the garden so that, that they would not be able to do that. They would not be able to eat of that tree. And friends, that is totally an act of the mercy and the grace of God. Um, Velpe said this about God's mercy and God's grace as he thought about this particular truth. He says, In peace, let me resign my breath and thy salvation see. My sin deserves eternal death, but Jesus died for me. Friends, every single one of us, because of our sin, deserve eternal death. We deserve eternal separation from God forever in the lake of fire. But the Lord Jesus Christ, in his love and in his mercy, died upon the cross of Calvary to bear your sin upon himself. The one who did no sin, who knew no sin, and in him was no sin, took upon himself our sin, so that through his death we could have eternal life. Friend, let me ask you today as we close, has there been a time, has there been a place, that you've repented of your sin, acknowledged that there's absolutely nothing whatsoever that you can do to save yourself, Thank the Lord Jesus for loving you. Thank him that he died upon the cross in your place, taking your sin penalty. And have you come to that place that you've trusted him 
and him alone to save you from your sin. Friends, if you haven't done that, today would be a wonderful day to come to him and to repent of your sin and to trust him for your soul's salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is a day of salvation. You see, the truth, that the question that needs to be asked is this. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? What will you do with Jesus? Neutral, you cannot be. One day your heart will be asking, what will he do with me? Think about it, friends. Eternity is too long to get it wrong.